il faut dire aux joueurs, il est temps de parler fort, juste et de dénoncer le racisme à chaque fois qu'il y a un acte de racisme. Il faut arrêter d'avoir peur, il faut être courageux. This is France's most capped player. Quite simply, Lillian Thuram is a titan of French football. As an imperious defender, he was a warrior on the pitch. But since retirement in 2008, Thuram has become a warrior off it too. He regularly speaks out about one of the most significant issues in football. Je suis arrivé en Italie en 1996. Et déjà à l'époque, malheureusement, il y avait des supporters qui faisaient le bruit du singe. Euh, J'avais déjà la chance de comprendre euh, le mécanisme du racisme, donc je ne souffrais pas de cela. In this week's episode of the show, we're discussing racism in football. Hello, I'm Sam Ashu in Doha, and this is Football Now. In this edition, we're looking at one of the most recurring issues in football, racism. We've got an in-depth interview with the man that you heard from just then, Lillian Turan. But before we hear more from him, we must remind ourselves of some of the key moments which have shamed the game. In 1988, John Barnes famously backheeled a banana that was thrown onto the pitch in a match between Liverpool and Everton. Barcelona's Samuel Eto'o had enough when his side faced Real Zara Gotha, the forward saying, no mass, no mass, no mass. His teammates followed him off the pitch shortly after. But then, after a conversation with manager Frank Rijkaard, Eto'o and his Barcelona teammates returned to the pitch and won the game. One of the Premier League's most controversial moments was when Luis Suarez was charged with racist comments towards Patrice Evra during Liverpool's match against Manchester United back in 2011. Suarez received an eight-game ban. Six years after then, the Russian Football Union was fined €25,000 for racist chanting by their fans during a friendly against France. N'Golo Conte, Paul Pogba and Usman Dembele were among some of those subjected to the heinous taunt. And earlier this year, having missed penalties in the Euro 2020 final, Bakayo Saka, Marcus Rashford and Jadon Sancho were all racially abused on social media immediately after the final whistle. These are, of course, just a handful of some of the countless times that players of colour have had to deal with racism aimed at them whilst just doing their job playing football. Well, racism has been on the rise over the last seven to eight years in football, in society, in the UK and across Europe. Um, and we see that not just in the reporting statistics that we get uh, for football, but also in our UK government hate crime statistics. So it's been a challenge over the last seven or eight years and racism doesn't travel alone. It travels along with other forms of hate based on gender, sexual orientation, religion, disability and so on. Let's have a look at some of the numbers then. Now, these are important because it gives a clear indication that fans, not just the players, believe that there is severe racism in football, in this case, in Europe. Now, as you can see from a poll conducted earlier this year, less than one fifth of fans in each country think that supporters are doing enough to tackle racism in the sport, with nine out of 10 ethnic minority Britons and Italians thinking more needs to be done. Now, back to the man you heard from earlier, Lillian Turam, a World Cup and European champion for France, winning 142 caps in the process. Countless domestic trophies whilst playing for Monaco, Palm, Juventus and Barcelona. And perhaps his most important accolade to date, the Legion of Honour Award, which he was given to for services to his country in 2013. Turam has released a book, it's called White Thinking. Les personnes de couleur blanche euh, pensent être euh, neutres dans l'histoire du racisme. C'est-à-dire, comme ils ne subissent pas le racisme, ils pensent qu'en fait, ils y sont pour rien. Et c'est pour cela, encore une fois, euh, j'essaie de dire qu'il n'y a pas de neutralité. Now, there's often a debate about players leaving the field after receiving racist comment. For Turam, there is only one option. Il faut qu'il y ait de plus en plus de joueurs blancs qui prennent la décision de dire ouvertement qu'ils sont contre le racisme et de quitter le terrain s'il y a des actes de racisme. Par exemple, euh, j'aime beaucoup le discours du capitaine de Liverpool, Jordan Henderson, parce que je trouve qu'il est très clair. Yeah, the praise for Henderson came earlier this year when he said, I don't think it can always be black players talking about racism. Seeing teammates suffer not only at Liverpool, but with England and players at different clubs, what they're abused with is tough to take. 
I feel as though if I can make a positive change and help them, it's important that I do. Well, FIFA and the Commission of the European Union are tackling the issue head on. They launched the EU Action Plan for Racism 2021 to 2025, outlining several proposals, including ensuring full social inclusion for people from racial minorities or ethnic groups. Earlier this year, the organization took action after Hungarian fans were found guilty of racist chanting at a World Cup qualifier, fining Hungary 180,000 euros and banning their fans from attending their country's next match. FIFA are currently in the process of strengthening their comprehensive anti-discrimination program, describing it as a cornerstone in the governing body's foundation of proactive measures to promote equality in football. Now, it's impossible to cover a topic like this in just six minutes, but with the help of Lillian Taram and Sanjay Bandare, we hope that we've given you something to think about this week. Do let us know using the hashtag FootballNowRacistAbuse, and we'll see you next time for more Football Now. <laughs>